Hello! On this platform, if you've watched some of my videos, you may be aware that we're often talking about the communication traits that you need to perform well at work. And we haven't spent a lot of time talking about the communication traits to watch out for, to be on your guard with, that are risky. So in today's video, we will talk about the communication style that high performers watch out for at work. So if you've ever had to work with a difficult, abrasive, arrogant, or aggressive person, this video is for you. communicators make life difficult and they teach us how much our communication style matters to build up a good reputation and make a solid impression at work. But how many of us actually get training in how to deal with verbally aggressive people? And heaven forbid, what do we do if we ourselves are at risk of being verbally aggressive? There are research-based tools to level up your social intelligence. And today, I'm going to talk with you about verbal aggression. This is a communication style you need to watch out for in other people because it will sabotage your comfort and confidence at work. And if you're the person delivering verbal aggression, keep watching because I've got some tips for you as well. Okay, let's get into today's episode. When it comes to verbal aggressiveness, there are four negative behaviors that can sabotage an interaction. These behaviors are based on some solid research by DeVries et al. And I'll outline how they occur so that you have a good sense of what verbal aggression is. Now, you probably know what it feels like when someone's verbally aggressive with you at work. But what will help you to self-regulate is if you can name the specifics of the behavior. This will reassure you if you feel like someone's gaslighting you or undermining you you'll be able to spot the symptoms of the behavior so you can then get a plan in place for your self-regulation. And this will allow you to achieve increased performance of a high nature, high performance at work. Now, there are times where our emotions overwhelm us and we may also be at risk of verbal aggression. I need to let you know, however, that verbally aggressive tendencies will result in you being less likely to be trusted. That one event where you've blown up or exploded at work or said a derogatory remark could actually impact long-term on your career plans, especially if you're aiming at being a leader. So if you're setting your sights on your first promotion into a management position, watch out for your behavior reflected through your communication because that can definitely plummet your chances if you don't play the game by the rules of trust building, rapport building, and impression management. Let's get into the four behaviors of verbal aggression that are validated by research as being symptoms and signs of communicators that drop the ball in the area of rapport, trust, and influence. Our first behavior will come as no surprise, and that is the behavior of angriness. When we're angry, we lost the capacity to self-regulate. That will result in usually a vocal, audible, loud outburst matched by fleeting, aggressive facial expressions like dominating eye contact, intimidating posture, and also reckless words, words that would impact the respect that we should show for our conversation partner. Behavior number two is authoritarianism. So if you're aspiring to be a leader and you're in that emerging leader position where you're on the wait, hoping someone will notice you, Take care not to be too domineering because the behavior of authoritarianism these days and according to research will definitely register as something that will break trust in your conversation partner. You want to find a way to be mutual, to build rapport, to assist, serve and influence people in a way that's not didactic, aggressive, arrogant. Authoritarianism will definitely get in the way and will pass off as aggression. People who are derogatory would make side remarks or even glances that seek to undermine the validity, the reputation, 
and the credibility of another person. So if you're working with a colleague or you have a contact who you don't really respect and you don't really trust, take care that your verbal behaviors and your body language always show professional respect. It's okay to not like people. It's okay to put people in the too hard to communicate with basket. But when we're at work, we have to show professionalism. And if you want to fuel your leadership potential, you need to learn how to communicate tactfully, politely, and in a leadership stance. And the ideal leaders show respect to everyone, no matter their behavior, no matter how irritated they are by their team members, they're always going to hold space and empathy to register the behavior and react in a firm, professional manner, but not in a derogatory manner. Take care of sarcasm, in-house jokes, snide remarks, eye-rolling, in-house gossip. All of these behaviors are negative and high performers simply opt out. Our last behavior of verbal aggression may come as a surprise because it doesn't register as something that's necessarily super visible or super active in its manner. And that is the behavior of non-supportiveness. There are many ways in which non-supportiveness would register. That could be in the form of ghosting emails or being exclusive with who you sit with or who you get a coffee for or who you crack a joke with. Leaders and people who show leadership potential have the ability to bind a team together. So showing acts of supportiveness for your colleagues or even your boss or people who you're interacting with who are not in your department, showing supportiveness for everyone around you is the best way to progress as a high performance communicator. Now over to you for the big question. Full disclosure, we're all human and today is a conversation, not a lecture. Let's acknowledge the fact that no one is perfect, but also take a moment for some self-reflection. I want you to reflect on these four negative behaviors that I've outlined. Angriness, authoritarianism, derogatoriness, and non-supportiveness. Ask yourself two questions. Question number one is, are you at risk for engaging at work in any of these behaviors? Get on top of it. Get some self-regulation strategies in place. Question number two is, are you experiencing any of these verbally aggressive behaviors at work? Are you on the receiving end? If so, I've got a quick tip for you. If someone is making a verbally aggressive remark in your direction or behavior, you can open inquiry with a rhetorical question. So let's, for example, take a scenario where someone undermined your work and said, you know what, that was a ridiculous idea or something of that nature. When you hear a comment like that, it will floor you. You might get stuck with your words. You might start to show negative body language that reduces how confident you look. You may even start racing with your thoughts and not quite know how to advocate for yourself. In this instance, one of the best ways to self-regulate is to get that speaker talking more, but to direct the conversation rhetorically by opening their perspective and making an inquiry, an inquiry that sets your boundaries, that shows them that you noticed, that professionally asks them to give you more information. So when that snide remark falls, what you'll do is ask an open question. Oh, that's an interesting comment. Can you tell me more? Or I never thought of it from that perspective. Tell me more. I'd like to know more about your perspective in reference to that comment. In this moment, you'll catch the verbally aggressive person off guard. They'll not expect a reaction of this nature, especially if they've been getting away with it for some time. So in the moment where your thoughts are racing and your heart is beating, your palms are sweaty and you don't know what to say when someone is undermining you, ask that rhetorical question. Don't react with a verbally aggressive remark. Just ask that question. Why do you say that? One of the best ways to manage yourself at work is to work on how you communicate. And if you're dealing with a difficult colleague, you'll want to build up your speaking and language skills so that you can show up with confidence, a professional touch, and consistent self-regulation because you're an exemplary professional. How do professionals achieve effective communication at work? The quick and easy way. You can only learn to speak confidently with anyone, anywhere, if you have the tools to transform your speaking logic and habits. And the High Performance Communication Audit shows you how. 
This science-based communication service helps you speak with more clarity, charisma, and confidence. Join today over on my website. Today, we covered the four negative facets that make up verbally aggressive communication styles that you need to watch out for in your own communication and also in other people. Did you find this topic helpful? I'd love to learn more about your challenges, so make sure you reach out via the comments below with any questions and subscribe over on my main platform at sarahgeiger.com to stay up to date with all the resources for social intelligence, leadership and career communication coming. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, can you do me a favor and click like? That helps me immensely on YouTube. And also don't forget to subscribe as well if you enjoy this type of content. I want to let you know that after this video, I have something very special coming for you. So keep tuning in. See you soon and ciao for now. I have some exciting news for you. I want to invite you cordially to attend a new leadership communication course, which is coming soon. Now, as you know, I don't release bonus classes very often. And when I do, they're a sellout. So I recommend you sign up for this class so you don't miss out on some incredible training that could change your career for the better. Now, you might be wondering, who is this class for? This class is designed for you if you're an emerging leader. And that would be if you're in a position where you're aiming for a leadership position at work, a management promotion, and it hasn't happened yet for whatever reason. In this class, you're going to learn the speaking behaviors you need to demonstrate to show that you're ready for the next step, that is, your dream promotion. We'll cover key leadership reputation principles to focus on so that you can be noticed as a potential leader. And I'll outline for you the magic formula for building relationships through effective professional communication so that you can build ironclad rapport with all personalities especially those who can make a difference in your career. We'll investigate red flags for your leadership reputation management. And I'll also share with you an exciting research-backed way to understand exactly what your communication style is like so that you can better position your strengths in job applications or even spontaneous promotion conversations. Below this video, you can find a link to sign up for the class. I remind you the class is coming very soon and seats are limited. So make sure you sign up so you don't miss out on this incredible bonus leadership communication training session. I'm very excited to help you build out your leadership potential so that people take notice and you can segue into that career position of your dreams. Looking forward to seeing you in the class.